Most companies are rushing into generative AI. If that's your case, stop, because in this video I will share with you the top 9 risks your company cannot afford to ignore while embracing generative AI. Hi there, I'm Kelvin Fernandez, your AI advisor, and welcome to another AI shot. You know, everybody is rushing into using generative AI and including generative AI in their companies, but they don't even pause for a second to think if these new tools are actually integrated and aligned with their value proposition. And most importantly, they don't even think about the kind of risks that they could be taking by embracing these kind of tools. We have some customers that decided to ignore these risks. They just said we were being too cautious and after a few days, they were asking us to turn off the AI. In a previous video, I shared with you how generative AI is lowering the entry cost for many companies to embrace AI. However, the new superpowers come with some risks. And in this video, I will share with you the top nine risks your company cannot ignore while using generative AI. But before we move into this risk, I have a special request for you. If you have gained any value from this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Okay, so let's go with the first risk, which is data governance. We shared with you in a previous video how you can be leaking sensitive information into these generative AI tools, into these large language models, and how you cannot prevent them from then telling this information or outputting this information to the end user. So to avoid this risk, you need a clear data governance strategy and principles with the right access level to each data point so you can control who gets which information and who can be exposed to each type of data. The second risk is the reliability of the expected output. While these models can shine on quick tests, they are still AI models. So they are built to be accurate in general, but to fail sometimes. So make sure you're using generative AI for processes that do not require an extreme reliability. So processes that can fail sometimes. Also, you will need to have some fallback plans in case the generative AI fails. For example, let's say you're expecting a number. What happens if it answers with a different thing with some text? Let's say you're expecting a, with a given word to determine if you are moving to the next phase or no. What happens if it answers with a different type of data? So have fallback plans that allow you to recover from these failed scenarios. Now let's go for the third risk, which is reliability of the input data. The quality of any AI model depends on the quality of the input data that you feed. In the case of generative AI, the input means both the training data that you use to fine tune it or also the context that you use as part of the prompts for these large language models. For example, you need to ask yourself, I am passing reliable sources of information to this generative AI model. For example, let's say that you are building a customer support automation tool like a chatbot. You can use, for example, previous conversation from this chatbot from your historical customer support to feed the generative AI. You need to ask yourself if these conversations are reliable or if they follow your standard operating procedures from your company. For example, you may be feeding information from a trainee that didn't comply with all your protocols and then you will be propagating the errors from this novice user into the whole process of customer support by embedding this kind of data into the generative AI tool. Also, you need to ask yourself if those data sources are still up to date. For example, you can be passing reliable information for your standard operating procedures, but they are just outdated, so they are no longer relevant and you need to make sure that the data that you pass is high quality and also is up to date to make sure the outputs will be then consistent with what you expect. The fourth risk is hallucination. So remember, these LLMs can look like brilliant, but they are not just that intelligent in a sense that they don't understand the difference from facts and you know in inventions in the real world. So large language models are just eloquent machines. So LLMs tend to answer even if they just need to do some guesswork. Okay? And we call this process hallucination. And this is one of the most common risks. The risk number five is knowledge obsolescence. So let's say that you are taking a task that is now being done by a manual, by a team, by a human team, and you put it into a generative AI. What happens if the systems are down and the generative AI cannot answer? Are you able to quickly reactivate the team to, to start doing this task again? Did you document the process? Until the generative AI technology reaches a certain level of maturity, make sure you are able to roll back to the previous stage before you're not just trusting this technology too much. By the way, if you like this video so far, in the description, I leave some bonus content with all these nine risks to know if you are exposed to them and how to mitigate them. So click the link below. Risk number six is introducing new workflow bottlenecks. And we have a previous video about this, but with generative AI, is even more clear nowadays. Let's say you are automating a certain task using LLMs. For example, you are automating your customer support. By doing so, you expect your whole company to be way more efficient because you can now handle tickets in a faster manner. But you realize you just introduced a new bottleneck because your operational team, the actual team that handles this request, 
cannot move with the same speed that their new automated customer support team is handling the requests. In the end, you will think that the generative AI didn't improve any and didn't bring any optimization into the whole company. And you are right, because now you have a new bottleneck at a different stage. So whenever you are optimizing one step into your whole workflow, make sure that you have an elastic capacity in the rest of the process so you can actually benefit from the optimization that you are introducing into this step. Risk number seven is control. So in the same way that you are using generative AI to optimize your company in an exponential manner, so you will have an exponential increase on in productivity, if something bad happens, if any mistake happens, these mistakes will likely propagate faster. So make sure you have proper control mechanisms to avoid catastrophic scenarios if these AIs start failing. Also, make sure you have good quality control mechanisms and good practices when using this technology. Risk number eight is biases and ethical considerations. So yes, these AI models are trained with information all over the internet and it will embed all the biases and ethical problems that may be found on any page on the internet, okay? So be aware of this. And even if the companies that are developing these models have their own considerations and processes to avoid this biased information to be leaked into the AI models, the way they prevent bias or ethical consideration or even their values cannot be aligned with your own values. So you are just submitting to the preferences of the companies that are choosing the data that these models digest. So by using a third-party LLM, you may be subject to a source of bias that doesn't represent your company culture and values. So validate if you are mistreating your end users for whatever you consider it's a mistreatment or a bias concern. And here I won't play the role of the judge that says that your values are good or bad or that the values of the company that provides this service are good or bad. I'm just saying that you will need to understand if the outcomes that these AI tools provide are aligned with your value proposition, are aligned with your culture, are aligned with your values. And this is something that you have to assess yourself. And the last risk, risk number nine, is legal and compliance. Generative AI is a very recent technology that is causing a lot of hype. So we expect to attract a lot of eyeballs, a lot of attention from the regulatory component into how these tools are designed and used. In the near future, we expect some dramatic changes on the regulatory aspects. For example, we have the new AI Act from the European Union, and it will for sure derive into new rules of the game for these generative AI tools. This may force you to rethink some of your applications, even to dump some of the applications that you are tackling, or it may even happen that some of the players that you are relying on, or some of the models that you are using, will be forbidden in your market or will leave your market. If you want to embrace generative AI, make sure you contact us. I will leave the link in the description and we will help you and align your value proposition with your tool and mitigating all of these risks. My next two videos will be about how to mitigate these risks and how to choose between an open source and a proprietary generative AI technology. I will leave the link on top once they are published, but in the meantime, remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss any content.